couple of the heads, maybe like the three people there. So I always start with the heads. Um, up to you. You can use people of, uh, you can use one person even. Okay. That. Yeah, someone here. I, I find it helps when you when you're drawing people of different sizes. So like the what the people near the front are kind of larger, and the and then you have some small figures out the back here. See? Okay. So you got got in a few people. Um, you can of course you don't have to follow what I'm doing exactly. You might want to put another person like here. You know, up to you. Up to you. Uh, now in terms of like drawing um drawing a car. I, I tend to just I tend to just do this sort of thing. I just put in like a rectangular like shape like that for the windscreen. Okay. And then the the base of the car where the bumper is and all the tail lights again like kind of rectangular shape. Okay. Can you see that? It's kind of rectangular but comes up a bit. Okay. So it's there's just, just, just boxes basically. Okay. And then you might draw another one next to it, like that, there. Um, and of course, they got a couple of wheels, something like that, okay? So you should see kind of uh, all the cars and all the heads of the people roughly on the same point, roughly on the same point on the horizon line, okay? Um, the buildings, you know, you don't have to draw in all the, you know, this, this, is, this is a bit much but we can simplify the buildings down. That's just to one big shape. So if we look at the buildings, um, we've got this really big one coming up to the left. So just draw that whole building in with one shape. Okay, just one large shape. I mean, we know it kind of goes all the way up to the top of the page, comes down like here. It's kind of like the side of that building. Okay. And that. Um, and then with the buildings on the right hand side, um, again, you can kind of make it up, but I can draw like a box, kind of like this. Okay, bit of a box. Just have a bit of a play around with some of these shapes. It's just getting a few box-like sort of shapes in there to indicate, you know, just make th make it up. I mean, this is actually a scene of Manhattan. Okay. Okay, what do we got? Okay, so you should have something, there's something that looks it looks like that. Okay. But you can, I mean, you might have your own photograph that you want to use. That's fine as well. Just use some references. But uh, yeah, something something like that. Okay. And look at how all these buildings, I've just kind of simplified them down to yeah. just box like sort of shapes. Just the outline of the building. Just the outline, yeah. I tend to use as little um, time drawing as I can, but really using really sort of planning out exactly what i'm doing the drawing is just a plan can we see that please yeah yeah, yeah. pass it around have a look so we're going to use a bit of wet in dry technique okay and to start off with what i want to do pick up a bit of I reckon for the buildings, if you want to make it look like that painting that I've done before, pick pick up like a warmer color, like this yellow, yellowy sort of color. Just drop that yellow in to all the buildings like that. Okay. And mix enough water in it. Okay. It has to be transparent. Um, one of the one of the things people um, people do when they're transitioning over from, say, using acrylics or oils is that they, they use the paint um in, in too high concentrations you have to dilute it down a lot so in terms of the concentration of paint for this wash i'd say you're only using 10 percent 10 to 20 percent paint and 80 percent water so just going through and putting in a bit of this yellow for the buildings like that okay 
So you should have all the buildings just colored in this orangey yellow color. Um, you can even drop in other colors at the base, like a bit of red. Um, this is again, wet and wet technique where we're painting into an area that's already wet by just dropping in some extra color. Just makes it look a bit more interesting sometimes. Okay. Um, what I, what I want to do now is carry this yellowy sort of color into the foreground. So where the people are walking. So just to indicate that there's a kind of a, you know, the, the sunlight on the ground. Okay. Like that. Okay. Then, um, we need to put a bit of blue in the sky. So a bit of that light blue, that light cerulean blue diluted down quite a lot. And just drop that in for the sky. Cut around the buildings so that the blue doesn't go completely into the mm -hmm. uh, into the yellow. So just cut around. And once you've done, just leave it. Okay. You should have something that looks like this. Okay. So I'm going to do this all in one go. Put in all the people, put in all the cars, the shadows, all in one go. Okay, it's just two, it's two washes. We've done one wash for all the sky and the buildings, that kind of stuff. Now pick up, pick up the brush, the kind of smaller brush and detailing brush. And um, for, for shadows, I actually, I really like using purple. I don't know why, I just, purple is my favorite color. But if you mix up a bit of blue and a bit of red together, you can get a purple, um, Honestly, you can use blue as a shadow. You can use a bit of gray. You can mix your primaries, all, all your colors together and get a kind of grayish color and use that as a shadow as well. Um, just as long as that color is darker than all the background colors, you're going to be fine. Okay. So when I'm mixing up this color, I'm using probably 40 to 50% paint and 60% water. So about 40% paint, 60% water. So pretty dark paint. Um, even though it's got water in it, it's going to be significantly darker than that previous wash. Okay. So why am I using purple? And <laughs> it's darker. And, and also it's a complementary color to yellow. So when you use complementary together, you can get um, quite a beautiful, vibrant effect. Some people don't like it because they think it might be too gaudy or that kind of thing. Um, it just, it just, it just depends. But so if I'm imagining that light source coming from the uh, the left hand side, we're going to know that this building is going to have a shadow on the right hand side like this. Okay. I'm going to exaggerate that shadow, color in that right-hand side of the building. Coming down, um, you know, maybe these buildings in the background as well, just put in a bit of shadow there. But the the trick is, is uh, to leave out bits of yellow on the buildings. Okay. And that's probably one of the hardest things to do, to just um, leave an area and not paint it. <laughs> Because the temptation is you often just want to paint everything. So on the right hand side, the buildings on the right hand side, we're going to know that there's, there's actually a shadow um, that's hitting this, that side of the building. Sorry, the light hitting that side of the building and then the part facing us may have like a shadow here like that. Sometimes in the background, just soften that one down. Okay. I'll bring this over so you guys can have a look at what I'm doing as well, um, so that you kind of understand what I'm trying to do. Just a really basic sort of thing at the moment. Okay. First, and then the people at the front, we will use um, similar sort of color. I'll probably just use like a darker neutral tint color. Um, you can also put, you can also just decide what colors, shirts and stuff like that you want the people to wear. Like again, because we've got all these warmer colors in there, if you put a bit of um, 
he put a bit of cool color in it, like a bit of blue. So if I got this, uh, what have I got here? A bit of that cerulean blue. Here we go here. It's always important to make sure you rinse your brush off properly if you want to. Um, you want that color color to look more pure. Um, and I can just put in a bit of this little bit of blue for this person. Um, you know, I can get a bit of orange and think, hey, I want to make this person kind of orange here. This one more purple. Okay. Cars. I just can leave the windscreen, part of the windscreen, um, white. Uh, where's the shadow coming from? The right-hand side. Okay. A little bit of the legs of the people as well. I always do the legs a little bit darker. Uh, so that it just creates more contrast on the ground. Um, and yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, you can even leave the, the shirts white if you want. That's fine. And then, of course, the shadows of the people need to match the, sh you know, the whole pattern. So you'll make sure those shadows run towards that right-hand side as well. Okay. I'll bring this over in a second so you can have a look at it. Okay. Sometimes you can even have, like, larger shadows on the ground for, like, a building something coming through to you. All right. 